Greetings, and welcome to the latest installment of The Crypt of the Public Domain! <laughs> I'm your host, Mike Peters, and this is a very special episode because this time we're doing it live. That's right, folks. We're completely live. So on the off chance someone out there in TV land is watching, feel free to call in and chat, make fun of me, whatever you want to do. Our studio phone number is 516-629-3705 or 3715. Today is also special because it's Halloween. Yes, Halloween, when all the ghouls and goblins hit the streets for mischief and mayhem. It's also the only time you're allowed to accept candy from a stranger, so take advantage of that. Halloween is my favorite hol holiday. I love everything about it. So as my gift to you, I'm gonna open the crypt and share some of my favorite spooky cartoons for all you crazy kids out there. Later, we're gonna check ourselves into the Cobweb Hotel, and we're gonna spend some time with one of my favorite cartoon dogs, Bimbo. But first, I'm gonna bring it real far back all the way back to 1923. That's right, this film stars the one, the only, Felix the Cat. Felix is one of the most popular cartoon characters of all times. He's been adored by the kitties for almost a whole century. It's hard to believe, but the first cartoon dates all the way back to 1919. That predates the first Mickey Mouse, which you're seeing on the screen right now, by almost a decade. In fact, it predates the sound in motion pictures as well. That's right, the first tune we're gonna show you <laughs> uh, is silent, and you can really see how the filmmakers were just starting to experiment with all the potential of animation. This was really cutting edge stuff at the time. So without further ado, I present you Felix the Ghost Breaker. Enjoy.
Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that cartoon. If you're just joining us, you're watching The Crypt of the Public Domain. And today's very special live Halloween episode, and it's all about cartoons. We just watched Felix the Ghost Breaker, one of the earliest and definitely scariest cartoons featuring Felix the Cat. Uh, Felix was a wildly successful character, and the first cartoon to draw major audiences out uh, to watch in theaters, which at the time was the only way you got to see these great films. Now, uh, in the later 20s, sound was introduced to cartoons, and Felix is, Felix's success was beginning to fade in the shadow of the behemoth animation studio, Disney. Now, unfortunately for us, Disney pulls some sort of shady business to keep all their cartoons copyrighted, so we won't be showing anything from them. Lucky for us, there is another animation superstar we can show. Uh, so our next cartoon comes from the talented Max Fleischer. There he is. Max pioneered animation techniques that had never been seen before. Uh, he invented the rotoscope, which is an animation method. You just saw a picture of it up there. Uh, that traces over uh, live, uh, live film frame by frame. Now, rotoscoping is still used uh, in major motion pictures today, though now it's done with computers. Um, you've probably seen some other Fleischer cartoons. Uh, he's responsible for Popeye, which we just saw for a brief second. Uh, he also did the original Superman cartoons, uh, and one of my personal favorites, Betty Boop. Now, Betty Boop cartoons have gone through many phases. Early on, the protagonist was actually a dog named Bimbo. There he is. Bimbo was a lovable scamp who always found himself in crazy situations. His girlfriend, Betty Boop, would eventually steal the spotlight away from Bimbo and go on to have her own cartoons. So the cartoon we're about to see comes from 1931. It's called Bimbo's Initiation, uh, where a happy-go-lucky protagonist finds himself in the grip of a strange subterranean cult with an, an agenda that's not too clear. Keep your eyes peeled, though, for, for, for familiar faces. And here's a hint. I'm not talking about Betty Boop. So uh, I want to roll uh, Bimbo's initiation. So we me must make sure that we have the second clip selected before we take it. And uh, without further ado, uh, enjoy this Betty Boop cartoon. We are the members of Do It or Die. D-I, D-I, D-I. Watch us make bimbo as easy as pie. D-I-D-I-D-I. -D -I -D -I -D -I. We are tough, you bet. Filled with college pep. Bring him on, we cry. D-I-D-I-D-I. B-I-M-B-O. Bimbo. <laughs> Want to be a member? Want to be a member? No. There's the way out. Thank <laughs> you. 
Oh, 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 What a pippin! Right. Welcome back to the Crypt of the Public Domain! <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that last cartoon. And did you notice anybody familiar? In that cartoon, there was a familiar face there, right there. That person who locked Bimbo in the torture chamber was none other than everybody's favorite rodent, Mickey Mouse. That mouse sure is a dirty rat. Now, I wonder why Fleischer would put Mickey in one of his cartoons. Perhaps it's a jab at a competing animation studio. Now, there is a lot of Masonic imagery 
in Bimbo's initiation. Perhaps Fleischer was making reference to Disney's tie with the Masons. Maybe that's who helps keep Disney tunes out of the public domain. It's all an Illuminati conspiracy. I knew it. Spread the word, people. Uh, on behalf of the Public Access Television Corporation and the crypt of the public domain, I, I would like to personally let you know that there is no such thing as the Illuminati, and no, they do not secretly control the world. Okay. Now that that's out of the way, we can move on to our last cartoon. This next one also comes from Fleischer Studios. This one is sort of a, a standalone. While the first two cartoons we watched featured famous recurring cartoon characters, this last film has kind of its own story. It's called The Cobweb, Ho Cobweb Hotel. It's about a sneaky spider who opens up a hotel where, where weary insect travelers can rest their head for the night. But does this sneaky spider have secret sinister intentions? Take a look and find out. Sweet. <laughs> 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 
Wow. Talk about creepy. There's something about these old animations with the poor audio dubbing that just kind of gives me the willies. I remember watching that last cartoon when I was a kid and getting the heebie-jeebies from it. So I hope you all enjoyed the tunes and hopefully you learned a little something too. Uh, maybe you have a newfound appreciation for these classics from the golden age of animation. Anyway, thanks for taking time out of your busy trick-or-treat schedules uh, to watch some cartoons with me. And we'll catch you next time on The Crypt of the Public Domain! <laughs>